Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today I will be reviewing the, this 2018 Honda Civic LX. To be perfectly honest, this is my 2018 Honda Civic LX. About a month ago, I entered a Honda dealership and I wanted a Honda sedan, manual transmission, and I still wanted decent equipment for not too much money. And they offered me this, the LX. But before I begin going into the depths of this vehicle, I want to I want to describe the trim levels of this vehicle. Each Honda has three options. You have the four-door sedan, you have the two-door coupe, and you have the four-door hatchback, or five doors if you count the trunk. And uh, now each Honda has a trim level, each Honda Civic actually. You have the DX which is the base level, no air conditioning, manual transmission, base engine. Then you come to the LX, still the same deal pretty much. You have the base engine, you can still get it with the manual, but an automatic is an option, but you have air conditioning and that's it. Then you go to EX. EX, you start having the option of a bigger engine, since as a 1.5 liter turbo. And then you have more, sta more security features, such as lane keep assist, radar cruise control, and uh, so and a, a collision warning then you go and the touring is the high-end high-end model which you get the 1.5 turbo engine you get leather upholstery and all the features mentioned be uh, before although you still have sport versions you have the honda si which are available in the two-door coupe and the four-door sedan which offers a 2.5 liter turbo engine which produces around 205 horsepower and of course, there's the pride and joy of, of Honda Civics, the Civic Type R, which is a hatchback and has 306 horsepower and only comes with a manual transmission. Now I'm going to talk about my car. My car is a Honda Civic LX, like I mentioned, 2018. I got it about a month ago. I really like it so far, especially with this manual transmission. I'm going to start out with the outside. Now the styling of the car has changed a lot over the years and the Honda Civic is now bigger than its big bad brother, the Honda Accord, from two, three years ago, from the previous generation, which is kind of remarkable, seeing that the Honda Accord is a mid-side sedan. Now, the Honda Civic LX, especially the LX uh, and the DX, only come with a plastic cover cap, so wheel caps. Now, there is an option to get 17-inch alloy wheels, but as I said, it's an option. Now, I want to talk about the key. The key, since this is a base model, you don't get a keyless entry and a remote starter and a push starter button like you would get starting at the EX. But this key is quite a normal basic key. The one thing I hit the most about this car is one thing. Let's just say it's cold outside and I have to put something in the trunk. And you know, I don't have, I don't have the key in my hand and you know, I just really want to pop the trunk. Well, unfortunately, come here, there ain't no latch to open the trunk in the back. And that is the only thing I hate. Since this is an LX model, and like the DX, you do not have access to this latch in the back to open your trunk. So basically, to open the trunk in this car, I have two possible ways. The first way is I click this button in the door jam, and I pop the trunk. The second way is with the key. On the key, the last button on the bottom, is to open the trunk but I just want to latch speaking of the trunk it is a pretty decent roomy trunk as I will now show you sorry about the sun but as you see the trunk goes pretty far and back pretty roomy and it's a decent trunk for the size of the car and luckily this car still offers me to put down the bench the rear seats and how do I do that if I want more trunk space pretty simple you have two latches like this and basically what you do is you pull them each. But if I want more trunk space, it's pretty simple. And you basically pull down the bench like this. Now I'm gonna be presenting you all the features inside the car. As I said, I still get a decent amount of features. And this car, I mean, for 22.5, I'm impressed with what it offers. Now getting to the screen and the climate controls, now this being the LX, I have access to heated seats, 
which work fantastically. The only thing that happens is, and I'll, I just have one concern about these buttons, which I'll get back to in a minute. There we go with the screen and the infotainment. Now the infotainment, I always laughed, it looks a lot like a Android phone, but shh, I won't say too much. Uh, so basically you have your basic apps, you have audio, you have Apple CarPlay or and Auto, Android Auto, you got your phone, you got your info on your car, so basically you click that and it will give you everything you want. I want my trip computer, voice info and everything, the date, the current drive, history of a trip, I can just display a clock if I want to and it's, it really is intuitive and it is pretty easy to use. Now the only thing I hate about my uh, my infotainment system is the way you control the volume. There is no knob and every single passenger I see come in turns this knob. And look up in the upper left, it's the temperature, which people always get confused. It's actually this little thing right here. So you slide your finger, finger and it raises and puts down the volume. You can tap it. but. I just want a traditional now, and you see it's a little laggy sometimes, which isn't fun. Now the climate controls are pretty simple and easy to use, focus, thank you. So uh, you, it's one, it's a one zone, sorry, I have air conditioning, which mode I wanted it, and my fan. And since this is an LX, I of course get air conditioning. I control the temperature with this knob, the knob with this push for auto I do this to turn it off I have my defroster for mirrors and rear window for my front window if I want the air to be circulated constantly or to recuperate air from the outside starting with the gauge cluster now the gauge cluster is completely digital it's just a screen except for my temperature gauge and my fuel gauge but basically what I have I have access to my music information my phone information, if I want to change the units from miles to kilometers, and my fuel, my fuel range, my fuel consumption, and I can change music, I have my maintenance information, and that's pretty much it. But now I mentioned something about the heated seats and how they're placed. Well, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Let's just say I'm shifting into gear, so I want to put in first. Don't worry, my parking brake's on. I go here and see how my finger my finger arrives right there so sometimes when I'm not paying attention I'll just activate my heated seat and you know when it's 85 degrees outside I don't want my heated seat on and that is why that is why I really don't like it it is really not well placed well maybe it's placed okay for the automatic but for the manual not really the best now I'm going to show you two last features, one of them being one of my favorite features. Being this car as a manual, I drive a lot in the city and you know how driving a manual in the city can be really, really annoying. Sometimes you're constantly playing with the clutch and the brake and the gas and constantly shifting gear, which I love sometimes. But at some point, if it's been 30 minutes, my foot starts to get tired and I just... But thanks God, this is a 2018 model and it has one feature that I think all manuals today should have, especially when you're on a hill. That fabulous feature is brake hold. You press this button and once you come to a complete stop, the car will keep hold the brake for you. But there are two catches. The first catch is your seatbelt has to be buckled. And the second catch is you have to come to a complete stop. One kilometer, you can't just hold the brake and think the car is going to hold it for you. And but besides that, it is a great feature. All right, so I just buckled myself and I'm gonna click brake hold. As you see, it says brake hold system is ready. I hold the brake. I'll just turn off, I'll just take my parking brake off and as you see, the brake light is on. I'm currently not holding the brake, but as soon as I put my parking brake back on, the brake hold deactivates. I'm going to be taking this car on the road and I'm going to tell you how it drives. Luckily I'm on a back road and I'm going to be driving away from the city so driving this car, especially a manual, is going to be extremely fun. Let's get on the road. Now like I said I bought this car about a month ago and uh, so I've got, uh, I've had a month to get used to driving a manual 
because I wasn't really good before. Uh, so I was, you could imagine me driving a manual for the first time and being my daily driver. Um, yeah. Sometimes I regretted buying a manual, but when you're on the country road, just going through the gears like this, and honestly, I drove the automatic before I got this one, and uh, the automatic felt boring. And you know, this is a Honda Civic, so it's not a really exciting car to begin with. But getting the manual really brings more excitement to the drive because you're constantly shifting, you, you're controlling really everything. And also, the automatics in Hondas, I heard, are not so good, and their CVTs, which I hear is not a great transmission like a lot of Nissans. But that's beside the point. Having a manual is really great. And also, you know, this car doesn't have a ton of power. I think it has 158 horses, and I get a 0 to 60 in about 8 seconds. But having the manual transmission really helps. Why? Because I have, I can shift whenever I want. I could keep the engine turning at 4,000 RPMs and still have a great time. But that is not the point of this car. The car can be fun. It's a little go-kart. You know, it weighs like 2,500 pounds or something like that. And it's really fun to drive. I mean, it just... But there's body roll, and it's <laughs> it's a Honda, you know? It, it does what it has to do. It won't break down, and it, it doesn't cost much. But, you know, I bought this as a daily because I wanted my daily to be problem-free. No worries. I didn't have to worry that one morning, oh, great, it doesn't start. Why? Because it's an unreliable sports car. This will never, ever let me down, except if... I don't put gas in it. Wink, wink. But anyways, if people, if you're a person who is looking for a Honda Civic, I mean, it's the best car in terms of quality, I think. Uh, I think it's this car that's been the most sold in Canada for the last few years, and it's even built in Canada, Ontario, I think. And let me tell you, it is a great car. I mean, for $22,000, it's really amazing. For 22, it's good. In terms of price and quality, this is as good as it gets. I mean, the driving position is good. Yes, it's manual seats. Yes, it doesn't have leather. But, I mean, you don't buy this car because you want a luxury car. You buy this car because you're a person who doesn't really care about cars and you want a reliable car and you want a car that will easily bring you from A to Z. A to B, most people say. And let me tell you, I mean, I've driven this car for a month. I put up about a thousand kilometers on it. I don't drive a lot. And I have no regrets. No regrets whatsoever about this purchase. And I really love this car. Really, really love it. But I will purchase myself one day a uh, weekend car. You know, a weekend car that I can just have fun with. And if it breaks down, well... It's not a, well, you know, it won't be fun, but at least I'll have my daily, which will be able, I can trust it. I can rely on it, and I know that I will never have a problem with it. And like I said, getting it manual, it really is awesome. And uh, I haven't tried a Honda Civic uh, Type R, because uh, those are expensive cars. I think they're like uh, $50,000, well, at least in Canada. But I am telling you, in terms of driving, types of driving and everything this is absolutely the way to go all right guys well uh, after driving the car i can honestly tell you that this car is really a good car it is reliable it is fun to drive and for the price it offers it offers you great features and reliability and you know you know you can't go wrong with a honda we're going to be honest here and say honda civics are an icon in the automotive world. Um, they're a symbol. We all know what they are, and they are. We all know that we're reliable. There are millions and millions of them on the road, and they are just a really, really good car. And I am really happy about mine. And honestly, if you were a student as a first car, as an everyday car, your own car, 
It is really good. I mean, it's no Mercedes or Audi, but I mean, you don't need that. This car gives you what you need and maybe it gives you just a little bit more. It drives well. It's comfortable. It still looks pretty good. And it doesn't and it, there's no compromise in quality and it it works. It's functional and that's what you look for a car to take you from A to B with no issues. And it's a Nikon and it's one of the best cars I think you can buy. You know, not for pleasure and for flashing, but you know, just to have a car and not worry about it. But with that being said, guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.